Welcome to New Life Living, brought to you by New Life Church in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. We hope this Bible study led by one of our guest teachers encourages you in living the new life Jesus is offering you. This morning, we're going to be talking about prayer, but we're going to be talking about a very specific aspect of prayer. We're going to be talking about your prayer was heard. And how many of us have, have actually reached a place where we have prayed and you actually wonder whether or not it went that way? I mean, did you see yourself in there at all? You know, are you kind of just throwing prayers over the fence? Are you standing waiting for an answer? There's a multitude of ways for that to happen. We're going to go through a whole series of scriptures today. We're going to move quickly, and then we're going to tie it all together. But we start in uh, 1 John, the 5th chapter, reading from the, the 13th verse. It says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. And this is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in what we ask, we know we have the requests that we have asked of him. The confidence of knowing that he hears us. Now, as I indicated, we're going to move through a series of scriptures and we'll, we'll try and bring them all together. And the concept of every one of these scriptures is the fact that somewhere in it you will find your prayer was heard. So if we go to Daniel, the ninth chapter, starting at the 20th verse, and I'm not going to go into the, the entire story in each of these, the kind of an overview maybe, but see, Daniel had been reading in the book of Jeremiah. Ah, reading the scripture. And in there he found that Jeremiah had said through the Lord that the captivity of the nation of Israel was going to be 70 years. And he was seeing that the time has passed. And because of that, he goes into fasting and prayer. And in the ninth verse, he says, While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sins of my people Israel, and presenting my plea before the Lord my God, for the holy hill of my God, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in a vision at first, came to me swift in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. He made me understand, speaking with me, saying, O oh, Daniel, you have come out. I have now come out to give you insight and understanding to tell you you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the word and the understanding. In Daniel, the 10th chapter, again, we see Daniel. And in the 10th chapter, he was beginning to understand. There was understanding coming to him what the word and what the vision was. And again, he went into fasting and prayer. And in the 12th verse, it starts out and it says, And then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. First Samuel. We're introduced to a family, Elikhanah, Peninnah, and Hannah. And Hannah was at the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, and she offers up this prayer in verse 10 of Samuel, 1 Samuel 1. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow to the Lord and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me 
And for not your servant, but will give your servant a son that I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor will touch his head. At the dedication of the temple, after everything was completed, in Second Chronicles seven twelve, it says, The Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. And we move to the New Testament in Luke, the first, the first um, chapter, 11th verse. Here we have the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. And it says, And it appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense, and Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell on him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will call his name John. And then as we were going through the, the study of Acts not too long ago, we ran across a man by the name of Cornelius who was a centurion of the Roman army. And in the 30 and the 31st verse, it says, And Cornelius said, Four days ago at this hour I was praying at my house in the ninth hour, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms have been remembered before God. Now, each of these scriptures have a variation, but they all come to the place where your prayer was heard. In the late 1970s, the company I was working for, we designed, manufactured the predecessor to the global positioning system. And I was asked to step out of the engineering side of things and form a customer support group. The customer support group, we were to train the survey teams on the equipment, and we did that both in country and out of country. They were both domestic and foreign students. We had a lot of fun doing that. It was kind of an interesting thing. But in order to maintain and be able to understand the, the total concept of things, the entire wall across from my desk was a world map. <coughs> The congregation I was with at the time, we had all taken countries and were praying for them. And there were multiple people playing for a country in that, but looking at the map directly across from my desk, the, the Middle East was right in the center. And I chose the United Arab Emirates. And if you're familiar with the Emirates, it's Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Oman, and they all form on that horn, the, the southern end of the Straits of Hormuz. Well, in talking to, talking to the father one day, and, you know, I mean, I, I've known for a long time that we can call him Daddy. We can call him Papa. We can call him Abba Father, you know, how that, that translates. And it's simply a case of the fact I was just sitting there and I was looking over there and I said, you know, Daddy, it would really be cool if I got to train a team in Abu Dhabi or in the Emirates and be able to stand on the soil that I'm praying for. You really, you know, that, ah, you know. Short time later, the company was sold. It was moved out of state. I didn't go with the company. I went on to other ventures. So, not really looking at that as necessarily a, a prayer that I put up or just a desire of my heart, you know. But the fact is, is that when the company moved away and the job went away, then, yeah, that was it. You know, okay, done. So move on. So we fast forward to 1992. In 1991, my son had joined the Navy. In 92, he was stationed on a, 
um, support ship for a battle group. And the battle group was in the Persian Gulf. So about uh, 4 o'clock one morning, or some time like that, and I don't know how you handle phone calls in the middle of the night, especially those hours, you know, all the, the thoughts that go roaring through your mind about, oh my gosh, what's this all about, you know? It's, well, so I answered the phone, and it was our son. And he said, hey. He said, well, he said, we, we had an engine room fire. He said, and the guys did a marvelous job of putting it out. There was no one hurt. Everything is fine. But they said, we, we put into port, and they got to spend a couple of days just cleaning things up and getting things ready to go again and everything else. Now I asked him, I said, okay, where are you? He says, oh, I'm in Abu Dhabi. And I go, oh, this is nifty. Is this a case where my son is going to be able to walk the ground I was praying for? You know, type situation. He says, yeah, we're going to be here about three or four days, so yeah, we're going to go in and take a look around and just do some sightseeing and everything. And the thought hit me, and I said, hey, can you, can you get me a handful of soil and, and send it to me? You know, I'd really, like to, I'd really like to have it. He says, I'll see what I can do. So about three days later, the phone rings again, and it was him. He says, hey, Dad, there's a kilo on the way to you. And yeah, the laughter, the laughter here is, is understanding, you know. It usually refers to some aspect of drug trade or whatever, you know. So I'm saying, oh man, is anybody listening to this call? Am I expecting black SUVs to pull up in front of the house, you know? <laughs> so, but, but it came. I put it in a container and I put it on the shelf just for a short time. As it wasn't too many days later that I was actually working in the home office and for whatever reason I was doing, I don't remember what it was, but I, I laid a, a plastic tarp down. And I'm standing there and I'm looking at the tarp and I'm looking at the container. And, you know, it's, it's one of those duh moments. You know, because I reached up, opened the container, poured it on the plastic tarp, took my shoes and socks off, and I was standing on the soil that I had prayed for. Now in each of these cases, what was the underlying cause? What was the, either the speed or the lack of speed in which the prayers were answered? Daniel, we know, on the first prayer, it says that Gabriel came to him and it was immediate. You know, and we love those prayers. Before you even speak, stop speaking the prayer. You know, the answer's there. And to those we all say, Hallelujah. I mean, why aren't they all that way? You know, gee. You know. The second prayer that Daniel put forth, and he's fasting and praying, and it went for twenty one days. Why? Because his prayer triggered warfare, spiritual warfare, war in the heavenlies. And there was a warfare going on to bring the answer to him. And it took 21 days for the breakthrough to come. So, he got the answer. But it was a delayed thing. But it was something that Daniel per press, yeah, persevered in. He pressed into it. He continued to pray. He continued to fast. He didn't get part way through it and say, oh, phooey, this didn't work, so, you know, I quit. I got to talk about Solomon first before I talk about Hannah. Solomon had accomplished everything at the dedication of the temple. He, the house had been built. They spent seven days dedicating it. If you read the scripture, you'll find that there were virtually hundreds of thousands of, of sacrifices done. And you'll also read in the fifth and sixth chapter, Samuel had this extremely long prayer. 
Again, it was a prayer of repentance. It was a prayer for the nation of Israel. It was a prayer for the place. And when he was completed with all of that, it says the Lord, and it was the Lord himself. It was a pre-incarnate visitation by Jesus who came to him and said, your prayer has been heard, and I will make this house a house of sacrifice. Now, if we step to Hannah and we step to Elizabeth, we have two women. In the case of Hannah, the, the scripture says that the Lord had closed her womb. But you see, what was going on was the family had gone to Shiloh. And if you're not familiar with Shiloh, Shiloh is due north of Jerusalem, just about in the center of Israel, and that's where the Lord had said, this is where you will put the, the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. And it was just a, a easier for everybody to get to. They were up there to do sacrifice. The problem was, Paniah provoked Hannah miserably because of her barrenness. And that's not the first time we see that. Hagar used to do the same thing to Sarah, clear back. And this is just a standard thing that used to be done within the culture because of the fact that a barren woman sometimes was considered to be um, a punishment for sin. There was something wrong. But in this case, the Lord, it's said that the Lord closed her womb. Well, why? Anyway, she's before the tent and she's crying out. And it says that basically she was praying with deep groanings. She was in agony. And the fact is that she had prayed the prayer of saying, if you will give me a son. I don't know if she knew she was doing it, but you see in Exodus 13, the Lord makes a statement. He says, you shall set apart to the Lord, all that opens the womb, first opens the womb. And see, so she was saying, Lord, if you will give me a son, I will dedicate him to you. Well, basically, she was praying scripture. She was praying the principle that the Lord had laid down. Like I say, I don't know that she was doing that. And she knew it. But the fact is, that's, that's what she, she got. Now, the next day, her husband and her were worshiping the Lord. It says they went, went home. He knew her, and in due time, Samuel was born. Let's take a look at Elizabeth. Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest. His division was at the temple. And as a real quick overview, there were probably possibly up to about 18,000 who actually worked the temple doing the various jobs. They were divided into 24 divisions. They basically had two weeks a year, except for the holidays. And when they were there, the jobs were done by casting lots. So uh, somebody's actually figured it out that, that pretty much the, the fact that Zachariah was doing what he was doing that day was, uh, you know, it's like winning the lottery. You know, the, it's a huge number. So it wasn't just the fact that the lots came up the right way. I'm sure that God had his hand in it. Now, the altar of incense is about a 22-inch square altar covered with gold. It sits outside the veil that separates the holy place and the holy of holies in the temple where the, where the ark was sitting and the presence of God was. And they burned the incense while people were out in the outer court praying. And the concept is, is that as the incense rises, the prayers of the people rise with it. Now that particular <clears throat> picture is, is rather interesting 
because of the fact in, in Revelation, the eighth chapter and the third verse, it says, another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on a golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. What we're seeing Zechariah doing is what is happening on the heavenly side. It's just a good picture of it. But Zechariah is standing there, and all of a sudden Gabriel shows up, and he gives him that word. And he says, your, your prayer is heard. Some scholars actually think that he was praying that prayer at that moment. But far more scholars believe that not being the case, and the reason why they say it is because of his response to Gabriel and the fact that he actually doubted that this could happen. And if you remember the story correctly, Gabriel says, okay, you're not going to be able to speak until the child is born. So, bang, you know, end of story there. But the fact is, again, their prayer had been heard, but how long had they been praying that prayer? Here's two barren women. Now the question I ask is, do you have a place of barrenness in your prayer life? Do you have some place inside that just seems like there's nothing happening, and you, but you persist on praying, you persevere and you continue to go forth, waiting for something to be birthed, waiting for something to be birthed. Samuel was a judge, he was a prophet, he was a priest. He was born at the time when he was the one that anointed Saul and David as king. He also was highly influential in seeing the nation of Israel brought into unification. The nation had been divided, but under David, it all started coming back together again, and Samuel was in the midst of that. Galatians 4.4 4 tells us that Jesus was born in the fullness of time. Well, let me ask the question. Could John the Baptist, who was the one who was the voice crying in the wilderness and going before the Lord, could he have been born at any other time except in the fullness of time? You see, these two men were born exactly when the Lord determined it. And it happened to be sons that came forth as the first. And if you look at these two men, you might just simply say, they were influential in changing the world that they lived in, right in the midst of it. Now we know from the study of Acts that what was going on with Cornelius was he was praying, he was getting a vision and being told to send someone to go get Peter, and Peter is at the tanner's house in Joppa, and he's getting a vision, and he's being told they're going to come and get him. And there's more to Peter's vision, if you remember. It's where the, the large napkin came down, and all the, quote, unclean animals were on there, and, and Peter kept saying, no, Lord, I, I haven't touched any of those. And the Lord told him, he says, don't call unclean what I have declared clean. So Peter goes to Cornelius, and it's like, bam, the entire family gets saved. The Holy Spirit has manifested. And the door to the Gentiles was opened. And we all sit here today because Cornelius' prayer was answered. 
It's an interesting thing to, to, to stop and think about when you go that. <clears throat> the prayer or the desire of my heart that I prayed about standing on the soil of, a, of the United Arab Emirates It took my son growing up. It took my son making the decision that he was going to go in the Navy. It took the decision of the Navy to put him on that particular ship and to be stationed in the Persian Gulf. And then the engine room fire that put them on shore. That was over a decade, well over a decade. And it wasn't even a prayer that I was, you know, I, you know, it's one of those things you look at and you say, hey, this, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, oh well. But it wasn't until that time that I was standing on that tarp with the soil on the ground on it that I came, came to the understanding your prayer had been heard. What prayer have you been praying or prayer that you quit praying because the answer doesn't seem to have come? Is it a case where in fact such as Well, say you're praying for a family member. How long have you been praying? And does it bring forth an agony in your soul? I mean, we all have, we all have family members, friends in that, that we know if they don't come to the Lord, where they're going. And where they're going ain't a pretty place. You know, hell is not noted for that. Today, as we close, normally I would pray, but I'm going to ask if you're able, if you will stand with me. And I'm going to ask that you Search your memories, and it may not take any time at all. Is there a prayer? That seems to be a forgotten prayer. Is there a prayer that, even, even as we're going through this call to fall, this is the seventh day of it, is there something that has, has started to settle on your soul about what we're doing there? But I'm going to ask it, you all just, in a minute, just bow your heads, and I want you to revisit that prayer. I want you to pray the prayer. In many cases, we know what it is, but we'll just simply say, let the Holy Spirit bring alive those things that haven't been. I don't know what they are. You do. So if you'll bow your heads... And we'll just take about 30 seconds just to revisit those prayers. And to those prayers, I can add the amen. But I can also do this. I can look at you and say, by the word of God, I can declare your prayers have been heard. 
they've been heard. I'm hoping that what he'll do now by the Holy Spirit is those prayers that need to be continued, those prayers that need to be held for time to come, that he will continue to, to bring it forth to you. And you will do that. And you'll see the answers come. Elihana and Hannah, the next day it said, went out and worshiped the Lord. So I'm going to ask now that we worship the Lord. He who has the answer to the prayers, he who is the amen or the so be it to your prayers. So let us worship him. Thanks for listening in. If you have any questions about New Life Living, you can call us at area code 505-898-9788 or email us at info at nlnm.org. Until next time, our prayer and hope is you will experience the fullness of the new life Jesus has to offer you.